name is given to us. Help me say Jesus. I said, praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Sunshine in your life. Miracle in your life. You are waiting for a miracle in the night, so the amen of the afternoon is so low. Something good is coming your way. This Sunday morning, special Sunday morning, the Lord is going to open the heavens and shower blessings upon every life in Jesus' name. 
Father, we thank you and bless your name. What a great God you are. Every time, every moment, morning, afternoon, night, you always meet your people at the point of their need. And Lord, we come today and we're asking you meet everyone at the point of their need in Jesus' name. Your goodness will flow into every life. Happiness and joy will flow into every life. Miracles, salvation, blessing, healing, deliverance, the manifestation of your presence, manifestation of your power, manifestation of your glory in every life, even at this time, in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're talking about Jesus the almighty advocate with all authority. Talking about Jesus. We need to understand the people that just say Jesus, Jesus. I say, what does the name signify? What does his personality signify? We're talking about Jesus, the almighty advocate with all authority. Look at First John chapter 2. And we're looking at verse 1. First John chapter 2 verse 1. Little, my little children, the six write I unto you that ye seem not wonderful. My little children, even the little converts, the young converts, those who have just come into the kingdom and they have just become members of the family of God. And if for little children it's like that, that you seem not, how about those who are young men? How about those who are fathers and mothers in the Lord? How about those who have gathered some experience, garnered some experience after they were born again? How about those who are workers? How about those who are ministers? How about those who are preachers? If the little children are to be so empowered, so enabled, and so energized that they see not, how about those of us who have been in the kingdom for some time now, my little children, the six right I unto you, that you see not, and if any man sin, understand, it is a when any man sin, as if it's natural, when anyone is hungry, when anyone is thirsty, when anyone drinks water, no, if. If it happens accidentally, it's not uh, the regular thing, the normal thing, uh, you see it every day, you see it every time. No, if by chance, if by carelessness, if by an accident, any man seen, we have an advocate for the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You see that word there, advocate. Advocates are people that plead. You've been guilty of something, and then the advocate comes, and he pleads for you. But this advocate is the heavenly advocate. Earthly advocates can plead for somebody, and then they release him. But the advocate on earth does not have the power to transform lives. Therefore, those people that they pleaded for, they will do that thing again because it's their nature. But the heavenly advocate, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He pleads for us. We're forgiven, but not to live that we're forgiven. That advocate in heaven has the power to set us free. Advocate on earth may be able to intercede for you and plead for you and reconcile you to that person that you are challenged with. And the problem is solved, that problem. But that advocate does not have the power to make you not to do those things that caused the problem originally. But the difference with Christ as an advocate is that he sets you free from the problem that you had before. And he's pleading with the Father for you that you'll be forgiven, you're forgiven. That you'll be set free, you are set free. And that any impossibility in your life, which earthly men, earthly women, earthly peacemakers could not resolve he, the advocate in heaven, is able to resolve that problem. He heals, he delivers, he sets free, he transforms lives, he turns life around for the better. That's why he says, little children, this seeks right eye unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, and he is the propitiation for our sins. 
and not only for our sins, for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Is the savior for the whole world? Is the advocate for the whole world? Is the propitiation for the whole world? Is the power that grants us salvation in the whole world for everyone in the world? And the topic is Jesus, the Almighty Advocate. That watch Almighty means that He has might, He has power. He has strength, he has ability, he can help, and it's almighty. That means every power on earth, in heaven, given unto him, in Revelation chapter 1. He tells us in verse 7, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall will because of him. Even so, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Who is this? Look at verse 8. It says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. He is at the present moment in heaven sitting on the right hand of majesty on high he was when he came to the earth when he died for our sins he was buried and then he rose again and then he is to come and he is the almighty jesus christ his advocate and jesus christ is the almighty jesus the almighty advocate with all authority. This day, he'll take authority over everything against your life in Jesus' name. And his authority in your life will bear fruit, heavenly fruit, will bear fruit, a righteous fruit, will bear fruit, a fruit that makes you to be more than a conqueror in your life because he passes on that mighty power. He passes that into your life. We're looking at three things. Three things in the message. Number one, the prevailing authority of the almighty sovereign, king of kings and lord of lords, and the lord of all glory and power. He has the prevailing authority. Number two is the perpetual ability of the always able savior. Always able, not sometimes able, always able, not occasionally able, always able, not, uh, you know, in some cases he'll be able, other cases he may not be able, is the always able savior. And he has perpetual ability. Look at number three, uh, the permanent authorization. Not only that he has authority, he even authorizes us that what he did, we will do. And where he has authority, we also will have authority, the permanent authorization of the acknowledged son. The acknowledged son, the father acknowledged him and said, this is my only begotten son, hear ye him, because it's well pleased in him. And every prayer that goes through that authorized, acknowledged son, will be answered. He'll answer your prayer today. He will answer my prayer today. He will answer in Jesus' name. Look at number one, the prevailing authority of the almighty sovereign. Prevailing authority. Matthew chapter 28, and I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them. This was after his resurrection. Already he's demonstrated power on the cross, power at Calvary. He's demonstrated power over death. He's demonstrated power over what the worst that man could do. Those Jewish people, the Sanhedrin, and the leaders of the Jewish people, and the leaders of the Gentile people, the worst they could do is to nail a person on the cross. And they say, we've well, done it. But he had power over the worst enemy. And the worst anyone could do. And now he came, risen from the dead. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. In verse 19, go ye therefore, because all power resides in him, 
because all power is manifested by him because all power has been totally given to him by the heavenly father he says go ye therefore and teach all nations what do you teach them don't teach them about satan about impossibility about helplessness about what evil spirits can do he just said all power is given unto him in heaven and on earth he said go ye therefore there are some people in every message in everything they say they have to mention devil they have to mention satan they have to mention evil spirit they have to mention dark powers they have to mention principalities and powers and the more they do that the more they become afraid and the more they lose the sense and the understanding that the jesus will worship the jesus will serve and the jesus who has commissioned us has all power in heaven and on earth their preaching makes them afraid their analysis makes them afraid what they talk about makes them afraid when we go as christ has commanded for us to go he says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost look at verse 20 in verse 20 teaching them to observe teaching them to observe and you understand as he has given us authority and power he sends us forth into all nations any part of any nation and he says we should teach we shouldn't entertain we should teach we shouldn't uh, you know just make people happy we're not playing a game before the audience he said as we go we teach them teach them to observe there is something to observe there is something to obey in the word of the lord and so as you come you understand we come in the power in the strength of the jesus who is the almighty advocate and he says we should teach them everyone something to observe we should teach sinners what to do what to observe so that they can be saved we should teach the people who have gone astray and they have broken the law of god we should teach them about repentance something to observe when the message finishes there must be something you have learned there must be something you have heard there's something for you to observe which means to obey if you have stolen it says we should teach you something to observe what's that restitution you cannot just hear the word and then you brush buttock and then go back home and there's nothing to do and there's nothing to obey and there's nothing to observe you observe up of my goods have i given to the poor and if i have taken anything by false accusation i restore fourfold that's something to observe when you bring your gift before the altar and you remember somebody has ought against you there is something to observe and it says we teach everyone something to observe leave your gifts there and go to the offended brother offended sister offended husband offended wife offended manager offended director and give back that which you have stolen herein do i exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward god and man there is something to observe anytime you come and you hear the word of christ the one of all authority he says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world and the people of god said amen we're looking at luke chapter 4. in luke chapter 4 remember we're talking about the prevailing authority of the almighty sovereign that has authority over every soul you say you come to the lord what is this authority over you how do you act as if there's no authority as if there's no controller as if there's no director of your life if you are a soul come to christ he must have authority over you he has authority over sickness too he has authority over any power that holds you down any power beyond your power authority the prevailing authority tells us luke 
chapter 4, reading from verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach, to proclaim, to declare the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That is authority. It's authority today. You come to the Lord with your broken heart. He will heal your broken heart in Jesus' name. And he says to preach deliverance to the captives. You become a captive. A captive of Satan will give you deliverance today. Amen. Amen. And you are a captive uh, to substance. What I mean by substance, maybe marijuana, maybe alcohol, maybe pan wine. You can't deal without that. that you are a slave to that thing. And Jesus Christ, with all authority, he delivers from that captivity. Maybe you are a captive to womanizing. You, you cannot see a woman. Every woman looks very beautiful to you. And you're running after them. And you can spend all your salary on getting them and wanting to mess up with them. You are a captive. You are a captive to sensual things. It says he has been given the authority to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. It will open your blind eyes. I said they will open your blind eyes because he has that authority to recover sight for the blind and to search at liberty them that are bruised. The yoke of the world bruises you, bruises your heart, bruises your mind. And the Lord says he has the authority. Everyone bruised, everyone broken, everyone suffering. He will give you deliverance today in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19. Verse 19 to preach, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And in verse 20, verse 20 says, and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him verse 21 and he said he began to say unto them and he begins to say unto you this day somebody shout this day if you believe it's your day of total manifestation of the power of God say this day it will happen I said it will happen. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, and they were astonished. They were surprised at his doctrine for his word was with power. Verse 36. In verse 36, he tells us, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying, what a word is this for with authority that's the word for with authority everywhere jesus went authority everywhere jesus stood authority everyone jesus comes to authority and he comes to you today he comes to me today and he will manifest authority in your life in jesus name and with authority and power he commanded not pleading, not asking, will you please go out? No, not Christ. He commanded with authority the unclean spirits, and they come out. And they come out. That thing destroying you on the inside will come out today. That thing that is pushing you, pushing you, pushing you, do it, do it, do it. And it's sending you to the grave faster than you ought to get there. That thing that is pushing you on the inside, the Lord will manifest total, complete authority over that thing today in Jesus' name. They will come out. I said they will come out. When you hear the prayer today and you hear sickness, come out immediately. That thing will come out. Oppression, come out. That thing today will come out. And all the things that give you bad luck and the things that just turn your life upside down. No joy, no happiness, no gladness, no health, no success. All those things are coming out today in Jesus' name. We're coming to Matthew chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 8. Here is the centurion. And the centurion came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, my servant lies at home, sick of paralysis. 
and was totally impotent, could not stand, could not do anything, and was also tormented. He came with pain, pain, paralysis with pain, paralysis with anguish, paralysis with trauma. And in that condition, he left the servant at home. No, number one, the servant could not serve him anymore because of the palsy, because of the paralysis. And the servant could not do anything for himself anymore. The master had to be caring for him and serving him. Everything was turned upside down. And he heard about Jesus, and Jesus was available. Jesus is available for you today. I said, Jesus is available for you today. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Because my Lord had said, I'll come. What is your house? What is the direction? What is the road? I'll come with you and heal him. He said, no, you don't have to come. He said, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Remember, the servant was not even there in the physical. The centurion, the master, did not bring the tormented, paralyzed servant. Left him at home. He said, speak the word here, and the healing will get to my servant back at home, and my servant shall be healed. The same thing happens today. Here we are, and Jesus speaks through the microphone and just a microphone and the word gets to you there is the word of jesus is the word of salvation is the word of healing is the word of deliverance and immediately we mention the name of jesus it will happen to you right there speak the word only and my servant shall be healed and jesus said look at verse 13 verse 13 now verse 13 says and jesus said unto the centurion Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be done unto thee. And I tell you by the words of Jesus, after the service, go your way. Your healing will go with you. Your deliverance will go with you. The power of Christ, power to save, power to heal, power to destroy the works of the devil, all that power will go with you back home today in Jesus name and Jesus said as thou hast believed so be it done unto thee and his servant was healed in the cell same hour that's what he was asking for if he had asked for salvation his servant will be saved that same cell hour if he had asked for help the servant will have the healing that self same hour. If he had asked for power to live an overcoming life, that person will have the power to live the overcoming life that self same hour. Because he has authority, prevailing authority of the Almighty Sovereign. Uh, we're looking at First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm looking at verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Then cometh the end, that is, from that time of the centurion, all through the acts of the apostles, all through every century, every year, every, in every generation, up to this time, and then until the end. You understand? The authority of Jesus covers every situation, every generation, every century, every time, any time we're alive until the time of the end that prevailing authority of christ continues then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of god even the father to the father when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power any other power in your life Militating against you, against your spiritual life, against your overcoming life, he puts down every authority and every power. And he makes you to have the authority, the ability to live a life that is glorifying unto the Lord. In verse 25, verse 25, for he must reign. For he, Christ, 
must raise for he our savior must raise for he our lord must reign it will reign in your life it will reign in your brain how you know sometimes when people are deranged when people have mental problems when people have insanity there is another power that is reigning there he suspends their own power he suspends their own ability because a power contrary to their progress is reigning in their brain and jesus will come today he will subdue that negative power reigning in your brain in jesus name and then he reigns in your brain he reigns in your body blood pressure will not reign in my body diabetes will not reign in my body when sickness is reigning in the body when diabetes is reigning there you can't control when to sit down when to stand up the reigning one that diabetes reigning there was it get up and you have to get up run to the toilet you have to run to the toilet and if it says in the night get up get up get up you have to there is something else reigning but christ will come in your body today it will reign in your body it will subdue that power it will subdue that sickness that is reigning and he cries will reign every part of your life in jesus name he will reign in your character. He reigns in our character when we're born again. And he rules and he gives command. And we're led and controlled by the Spirit of God. You see, there are people who are led and controlled by circumstances. And as many as are led, governed, controlled, guided by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. But as many as are led and guided by wrath, the children of wrath as many as are led and guided by anger by animosity they are the children of anger and animosity whoever controls you whatever controls you is your lord is your master that's why you want to come to the lord today and say i want to change masters i want to change the lordship of what had been controlling guiding i want to be a real child of god guided controlled by the spirit and by the scripture it says he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet praise the lord it will happen to you it will reign in your life and every enemy of progress in your life will be subdued and brought down in jesus name today your sickness will depart today your sin will be thrashed trampled upon they will not have power over you anymore in Jesus' name. Any contrary power that will hinder your progress in the Lord and progress in your desires, today they will be brought down. And Christ will reign with all authority in your life, even today in Jesus' name. Number two now, number two, we're coming to the perpetual ability of the always able savior uh, you understand some people might be able to help you today and tomorrow when another challenge heavier challenge greater challenge comes they cannot help because they do not have the always abiding ability to help but in the case of christ his ability is perpetual his ability is always that's why he's referred to as the always able savior always mighty savior always powerful savior and there is no time any time of your life from the time you're born again until the time you see him face to face that you'll say well i understand he's been doing so much for me this one he cannot do this one he will do it today I said this one, it will do it today. The perpetual ability of the always able Savior. In Hebrews chapter 7, we're looking at verse 25. It says, Hebrews chapter 7, open your Bible, verse 25, wherefore he is able. 
now that he was he is able he may be able to do it in the future today he is able at the present time he is able in this generation wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever live to make intercession for them the point is he is able to save he is able to deliver he is able to sanctify he is able to purify our heart is able to make us holy is able to energize us he is able to empower us is able to baptize us immerse us in the holy ghost is able to solve our problem is able to handle any situation every situation will bring unto him wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. In verse 26, verse 26, for such an high priest became us, who is holy, that's why he's always able, always holy, always able, harmless, always harmless, always able, undefiled, always undefiled, always able, separate from sinners, always separated from uh, the sin of any age and the sin of any generation, made higher, always higher than the heavens, because of that is well able. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17, in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17, wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted and yet without sin he is able to succor them that are tempted you're facing temptation and the temptation appears irresistible christ is there by your side you're a child of god and you appeal to christ because he is able able to support able to succor able to help able to make you to have victory is able to succor them that are tempted we're looking at first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 there has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man look at whatever temptation you have somebody else in the kingdom of god has had a similar temptation before look at the challenge you have somebody else in the family of god had had that kind of challenge before look at the trial you have somebody else sage by grace catch by the power of god somebody else had had that same trial that you're having now they had it before and christ made them to overcome and that christ is always able is the always able savior and it says there's no temptation taking you but such as is common to man but god is faithful who also who will not suffer you allow you permitted you to be tempted above that ye are able look at this but he will with that temptation always also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it i'll be able i will be able god why have you, why have you allowed this trial to come to me i am not able that's a lie don't tell a lie in the face of god god why have you sent this temptation to me and you know that i cannot overcome this temptation? okay i'm going to fall now don't tell a lie in the presence of god he is able and because of that he makes a way for you to escape that he may be able to bear it you will not fall under temptation you will stand you'll be steadfast you will overcome in jesus name acts chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 32 acts chapter 20 verse 32 and now brethren i commend you to god 
and to the words of his grace. I commend you to God. I present you to God. I hand you over to God and to the words of his grace, which is able to build you up. You see, if there are people, they're not built up. They're thrown down. They're shattered. They're crushed in their lives. They're not growing. They're not being built up. And you ask them, why? You've been a Christian for all these years. You've had the word of his grace all these years. The same thing I saw you doing five years ago. The same thing you're still doing. You're not being built up. Your courage, your conviction, your strength, your steadfastness, your ability is not being built up. Or are you still the same like you were 10 years ago? Uh, you know, Pastor, the, I read the Bible and I try to study. But you know, all that I read, I get nothing from there. You're not reading the life. Because if you have the word of his grace, the word of his goodness, the word of his promise, he says that word is able to build you up. And your life will be different today than it was yesterday in Jesus' name. You know, uh, you find people, and uh, you know, every time there is a crusade, they're going on, they are there, they shout, they wave their hands, and they do everything, <laughs> but they still go back, and they do the same dumb things they've ever done. They're not being built up. They listen to every message, they listen to every word, but they're still the same, as weak as ever. The same thing that pushed them down many years ago, still pushing them down. Why don't you understand that there's an ability in Christ, an ability in your Savior, the always able Savior that builds us up with his word. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll find uh, some people, it's, it's like anger is inside them, bottles there. Well, when they were maybe many years ago, 20 years ago, something happens, and the way they frown, and the way they get angry, and the way they react, 20 years have come and gone. And today, that same thing happened. The same way they got angry 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and the same way they reacted 10 years ago, the same thing they do now. I said, come, my friend, where have you been? He said, I've been in the church all this time. Every time you come for crusade, I've always been there. Every time you come, you do retreat, I'm always there. I say, but I see something about you. The same way you reacted 15, 20 years ago to this kind of challenge, that's the same way you are reacting today. Your relationship with people, your interaction with people, clamping down on people, oppressing people, the same way you are still doing after 20 years now. You are not being built up. There must be a change. There must be a transformation in your reaction, in your response. Because when the word of his grace and the word of his power dwells and abides in you, things are going to be different. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Amen. Amen. Sanctified. You will be sanctified. Amen. amen. <laughs> you know, and other kind of amen. Absent and ab absent minded amen. That never brings sanctification. That's the kind of amen. The usual amen. Not excited about holiness, about pure heart, about sanctification. Amen. It will sanctify your heart in Jesus. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm looking at verse 20. The Ephesians chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 20. It says, Now unto him that is able. Every time you pray, you are coming to him that is able. Every time you are asking for restoration, you are coming to him that is able. Every time you are asking for the power, for the courage to do that restitution. You see, I don't have any courage of myself. I do not have any strength of myself to do that restitution. I'm always thinking the man, the woman will respond like this and then I am finished. 
because you are not thinking of him that is able every time you come unto the Lord for him that is able to give you power able to give you strength to correct that wrong thing you have done to return that thing you have stolen and to tell the truth when you are told a lie every time you come like that you are coming unto him that is able anytime you are coming for healing you are coming for deliverance and you say Lord do it for me you are coming to him that is able and he says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us where will the power work today where will the power work today you know when you're timid when you're fearful you're going to somebody you're dealing with somebody <laughs> that man will eat me up. That man will finish me. You know you come to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. When you realize that that power is working in, uh, in you, that tyrant cannot eat you up. That injurious person cannot eat you up. Now, many times we look at the faces of the people. Uh, you're going to somebody, you are you know, going to tell him something, you're going to preach the gospel to him. Uh, you're going to give him uh, the gospel of salvation. You look at his face, his face may look furious, but in the heart, uh, there are trees, you understand, they are tall, but they are hollow inside. And when the wind blows, because of the hollowness inside, it blows them that don't look at their faces. The power is inside you. The power is not in them. The ability is not in them. The power that walketh in us, that power will walk in you. That ability will walk in you. The glory of the Lord will shine forth through you because of the power. That walketh in you. Look at verse 21. It says unto him, be glory. God will have glory in your life. He'll have glory in your character. He'll have glory in your behavior. He'll have glory in your action. Unto him, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Hold on. Which church do you attend? What glory do you bring to that church? Are you saved? Are you born again? Are you bringing shame to the church? You are telling the person you commit that evil thing with. He knows you're a church man. He knows you're a church woman. What glory do you bring to the church? You are telling Or do you bring shame? Do they say, <laughs> you know, I don't go to church. They say, I do this. And they too, they do the same thing I do. And they say they go to church. I bribe, they bribe. I commit this, they commit that. And they say they're church people. When we come to the Lord, and we come to the God who is able, he so touches our lives, he transforms our lives, that now we let our light so shine before men so that they see our good works they see our good character they see our gracious behavior and they glorify our father who is in heaven and will bring glory unto the lord in the church it says unto him be glory in the church by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end and somebody shout yeah. amen jude chapter 1 verse 24 in jude chapter 1 reading from verse 24 it says now at this time now in this present life now in this situation that i know that i'm a born again christian now in this situation and circumstance now unto him that is able to keep you from falling he will keep you from falling you'll not fall into sin amen you'll not fall into danger you'll not fall into sickness 
you will not fall into any power above your strength. You will not fall into the hand of the wicked. Your, your journey to heaven, uh, from here to the consummation of that journey, you will not fall by the wayside. I will not fall by the wayside. I will not fall by the wayside. I will not fall before Satan. Uh, you can't talk anymore. I will not fall into sin. You remember, any time, any temptation is coming to fall to that same old sin, you say, no, not now, not now. I've graduated from that life of failure. I, I have graduated from that life of failure. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Verse 25, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. We're looking at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 10. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. That I, this Paul the Apostle, he was saved. That I, this Paul the Apostle, he was already sanctified. That I, this Paul the Apostle, was already filled and baptized, energized, empowered by the Holy Ghost. And yet, he wanted to know God more. And whatever level of knowledge, whatever level of intimacy, whatever level of relationship you have with God, with Christ today, there is still more. And so he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. In verse 11, it says, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, verse 12, not as though I'd already obtained or neither were ready perfect. Many people don't understand that part of scripture. Not that had already attained. It's not talking of, you know, salvation, initial salvation. You got that already. Not that had already attained. It's not talking of being sanctified as a definite work of grace. He got that already. Not as though I've already attained. It's not talking about baptism in the Holy Ghost. It was already filled with the Holy Ghost. Not that I'd already attained. It's not talking about gifts of the Spirit. Look at his life. He already had all those gifts of the Spirit. What did he mean then? Not that I already attained. He's been to the third heavens. And he knew the promises of God, the prophecy of God, and the provisions available in heaven. And he said, there is still more in heaven to add to what I have. There is still more in heaven to be given to me, much more and above what I've got. And he said, therefore, I don't think I've got everything that heaven has to offer. Not as though I'd already attained, neither were already perfect. That word perfect means complete, complete, totally complete in everything uh, provided by heaven. But I follow after that I may apprehend uh, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Verse 13, uh, in verse 13, brethren, I count not myself uh, to have apprehended. There's still more I'm still expecting. There's still more I'm praying for. There's still more I'm going to have. There is still more of resemblance to the Christ of heaven, my Savior, that I still need to have. Therefore, I don't say after, after any message I hear, I don't need to pray now. I've got it all. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, no, there is still more. This day, there is still more for you. There is more for me. You know, those people that, you know, they hear the word of God and after we say, rise up and let us pray, they run back home. They don't think there's anything heaven has for them anymore. They've got it all. They don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. They've got it all. They don't know what they're going to confront next week. They get, they've got it all. Everyone that understands that there is still something, 
something from the throne of God to be given unto them. They pray. They look at the word they have heard and they look at that word of grace and that word of power and they say, I need that. I want that. I will get that. That's why they wish me high to pray. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Look at verse 14. I press on. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, uh, it says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, uh, but I thought you said you are not perfect, no. What I meant there is that I'm not complete yet. There's still something for me to get from heaven, but I have perfect salvation. I have perfect sanctification. I have the perfect, complete baptism uh, in Holy Ghost. I have the complete gifts of the Spirit, and our people like him, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be those minded and if in anything ye be otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you verse 16 uh, in verse 16 nevertheless where we have already attained uh, let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing verse 17 uh, brethren uh, be ye followers together of me think about that be followers together of me. If his neighbors, church members, have seen him moving in an illicit, illegal way with a woman, you couldn't say, be ye followers of me. Hey, you have been tampering with church money. And people, they're gossiping and telling themselves, you know, our, you know, our Paul, this is a great man. This is a great preacher, but he pilfers, he steals, he takes church money. He couldn't have said, be ye followers of me. If he was getting angry at every little thing that happens, and he will burst out with anger. You know, a man like that couldn't say, be ye followers of me. A person that will say, be ye followers of me, Christ is reigning in his life. Christ is reigning uh, on his temper. Christ is reigning uh, in his behavior. Christ is reigning in his conduct. And if you're going to say, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm a leader, and I want people to follow me, then you must have what Paul the Apostle had, the grace of God that made him to live a life conformable to the life of Christ. Brethren, be ye for to follow us together of me and mark them which walk so as she have us for an example. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it tells us, for our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, in verse 21, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able. According to his working, he works in our lives, he works in our body, he works in our family, he works in our character, he works in our experiences, and he says, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. He'll subdue everything in our lives to himself in Jesus' name. Number three now. Number three, we're looking at the permanent authorization of the acknowledged son. The acknowledged son. The father acknowledged him. And he still acknowledges him today. The son of God. How? Son of God. Because he lived a perfect life that reflected the life, the character, the attributes of God. Son of God. The son of man. Why? Because he lived as a perfect man. The way man from the time of Adam should have lived. But Adam failed. The way 
all those people, men in every generation, the way they should have lived, they failed. But he came up to show us how the perfect man ought to live, the son of man. And now the son of God has come to earth to take sons and daughters of men and make them live like the son of man. And he has all the authority. And he's giving us the authority. He's transferring the authority unto us that we might live the victorious life. Live the triumphant life. Live the overcoming life. He authorizes us to be like him. He authorizes us to do like him. He authorizes us to walk like him. The permanent authorization of the acknowledged son. We're looking at Luke chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority. What kind of power? The same power he had, he gave unto them. You couldn't give anything less than what you have, and you can't give anything higher than what you have. The power he had over sin, over sickness, over Satan, over evil, over all situations. He gave them power and authority. That's authorization. He authorized them. He said, I've demonstrated it before you. I've lived before you. And here now you are to go. Anywhere you go, you are to do what I do. And what I could do, what I can do, go and do that. He gave them power and authority over all devils. We have the power. You have the power to and to kill diseases. Amen. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Are you ready? Has anybody ever given you a book? Has he give, just one? He said, this will benefit brother so-and-so. This will benefit sister so-and-so. And he bought that book. And he gave it unto you. Anything like that happened before? Answer. The question is, have you read the book? Have you opened the book? Have you got everything uh, inside that, you know, God gives us power. Christ gives us power. And he gives us authorization. And if you ask the average person, even the above average, if you ask, he gave you power. Have you ever used that power? Many people, no. He gave you power to heal. Have you ever healed? No. Anytime. Uh, Sickness situation comes, I call our state overseer. Any time, uh, any situation comes, I call on our leader to link me up with the general superintendent. How about the one you have? You have pen, uh, you are not using it, you have to come to me to use my pen for you. You have authorization, uh, you are not using, you have the name of Jesus, and that name of Jesus will work mighty in your mouth as it works in my mouth in Jesus' name. You have assurance in Christ, and you have faith in Christ, and you know, with your God and with your Christ, all things are possible. Why are you just collecting gifts of books? And so and so gave you a book, so and so gave you a book, and they're all piled there. You are not reading. When the next person wants to give you a book, why don't you say all that they have given me? I've not even started reading. Why do you just collect and collect and collect? And here we are today again. Power is coming to you. Authority is coming to you. Use the power that he gives you and use the authority that he gives you. Sickness will bow before you. Demons will bow before you. All those attacks and all those afflictions, they will bow before you in Jesus' name. Then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to kill diseases. I got it. I got it. You will use it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 there, look at what the Lord is telling us. In verse 2 it says, And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal 
the six. Look at verse six. In verse six, it tells us, and he departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Amen. Amen. After this crusade, I'll be hearing news from you. Yeah. That you go to all the towns, all the villages, all the communities, and you're using the power that the Lord had given unto you in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading there from verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And he says, I give unto you, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. When you have something like oppression, attack, affliction. Something is working at my back. Something is working uh, in my thigh. Something is uh, moving uh, in my stomach. What did you do about it? I ran uh, to the prayer warriors. And I said, I need this, I need this. And they pray and pray and pray. And then you go back. And uh, you know that thing, he knows you're not using the power that the Lord has given you. And then you run there again, you will not run again. I will not run again. Uh -uh. Little headache, pray now. Little stomach problem, pray now. Uh, there's something that is pulling my, uh, pulling my nerve and my muscle there. Pray, you will overcome. I will overcome. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over and over all the power of the enemy over all the power of the enemy yeah. pastor i read a lot but the enemies will not allow me to retain what i read you didn't read this one pastor i make effort i try 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 but i come back to square one no progress in my life Enemies will not allow me. Uh -uh. You are the one magnifying those enemies. Those enemies of your life, they are nothing. They will come to nothing. It says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, if in your life, you take this verse, you read it, read it, read it. Behold, I give unto you power to trade on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you you go you go and then you come back home and before you do anything if you're taking a glass of water you open it bit behold i give unto you power to trade on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you you're going to sleep at night you're doing the normal quiet time and you read everything you want to read and then before you fall asleep behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you you wake up in the morning you do your devotion family devotion and all that but before you go out you come back to behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means so you you're traveling to the village after you've made all your preparations and you've packed all your load and then you have prayed and you have said all the, the grace and then you open to this again i'm going to the village behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means of you when you read and read and read it becomes part of your life it will mix with your blood it will get into your brain it will be in your face it will as you are taking the word every step behold i give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy from now till you see jesus face to face nothing shall by any means hurt you who am I speaking today? Where are you? Today, it was time. Rise up and tell the Lord. And say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. I have the victory. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Open your mouth and say, Lord, here I am. Everything he has said. The authority of Christ. 
that he's always able. You're not praying. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Prevailing authority of the Almighty Sovereign. Receive him as your personal Savior. Know him as the ever present Savior. Recognize his presence in your life, his word of promise in your life. And you know, all authority belongs to him in heaven and in earth. And it's in that authority you're moving forward, going wherever you are going, doing whatever you are doing. Feel that authority. Sense that authority. Acknowledge that authority. Believe that authority. Confess that authority, the authority of Christ. And he says, we shall be taught all things whatsoever he has commanded, and that we should observe. Have you got anything in the message you're going to observe? Anything in his word you're going to observe? Anything according to his calling, you're going to observe. Teaching them to observe. Tell the Lord. All that I've heard, I will observe. I will obey. And then you live a victorious life. Observe. Obey. Keep. Do. Give your life, surrender your life unto the Lord. And say, Lord, here am I. Your authority, your control is upon my life. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. told us to repent. Have you observed that? Have you repented? He told us to make restitution. Have you observed that? Are you just piling up guilt and condemnation? No restitution? You can't say sorry to the people you have offended. You have not restored the money that you stole. You cannot rectify that thing that is crooked in your life. Now, observe to do what he has commanded. Make the right, the wrong things right in your life. Abandon, forsake every sin, every transgression. Observe to do. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. It's a new creation. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. New life. New language. New devotion. New lifestyle. Observe to do. And he has the ability is the always able savior always able savior is able to make you overcome temptation is able to make you overcome every trial is able to make you overcome the peculiar trait of anger in your life. The 
a boisterous temper, angry temper, violent temper, able to make you overcome. Able. Able. According to the power that worketh in us. That lifestyle of the snake in the green grass, sneaking, sneaking, doing evil and hiding it. It's able to make you overcome that kind of nature that will become sincere, transparent, holy. And you're not just behaving hypocritically like the green snake in the green grass. Able, able to save. Able, able to sanctify. Able, able to empower in the Holy Ghost. Able, able to heal. Able, able to deliver. Able, able to make you free from anxiety, worry, fretting. Able, able to deliver you from the fear of man. And your life is visible here and there because of the people you fear. But Christ is able, able to make you stable, sanctified, steady, solid, real, sanctified, steadfast character. Able. Able to embolden you that you live a confident life. Not self confident, savior confident, spiritual confidence. Able. Able to make you tread on serpents and scorpions. Able, able to make you overcome all the power of every enemy. He's able, and he has a perpetual ability. Always able, always able, always able to overcome. In every challenge you face in life. And it gives us permanent authorization. Authorization to use his name. And he says, whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. You have not of In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> now you say it for yourself. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody wants your prayer go. God has answered your prayer. A new authority in your life. A new power in your life. A new possibility in your life. In Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because of what you have promised. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray for those who have asked for salvation, for forgiveness, for freedom, for power over every temptation. Do as they have asked you in Jesus' name. Bring assurance of salvation to them. Let the spirit of God witness in their heart their sins are forgiven. 
salvation has come to settle in their heart. And I pray, Lord, for those who have asked you for sanctification, purity of heart, holiness of heart, sincerity in their heart, no form of hypocrisy or make believe. Lord, I pray that transparent, sanctified life, purified life, holy life, grant to them in Jesus' name. Lord, it will not just be sanctification in doctrine. It will be sanctification in demonstration. Confirm each and every life in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have asked for the power of the Holy Ghost. who said the promises unto you and to children and to many that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. I pray that our lives will not be powerless. Power. In feeling. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. Grant to the sanctified vessels in Jesus' name. Lord, everything we have heard today in your word. We're going forth to observe, to obey, and to do in Jesus' name. And this special privilege you have given us, that behold, I give unto you power. Power. Power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Physical, supernatural, coming from darkness, we tread on everyone, everything, in Jesus' name and power over all the power of the enemies. Amen. Lord, we say amen. amen. We accept it. Amen. We believe it. Amen. We confess it. Amen. From this day, no enemy will stand against our progress and succeed. Amen. We have the power over all those enemies on land, from the sea, from the sky, from the bush, we have the power over all the power of all enemies in Jesus' name. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. The concoction of the wicked will not kill you. The manipulation of the wicked will not cut your life short. And the things that are coming from the paths of darkness will not hurt or hinder your progress in Jesus' name. Nothing below. Nothing around. Nothing in the sky. Nothing from the dark. Nothing from the pretenders will hurt your life in Jesus' name. You will not die another person's death. The road will be clear for you every time you travel. Protection upon your life. Preservation upon your life. Long life you will have. And when we come back again to this Alpha location for another GCK, you will still be alive. Lord, confirm your power, your promise. Confirm all possibilities on every life right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. You've got it. Take your blessing and go home rejoicing, excited, and keeping everything that you have got today. Nobody will take the minutest part of your blessing away from you in Jesus' name. Thank you and God bless you.